Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Wednesday. It is the 24th day of May 2023. I hope you're all safe and healthy today and that your family is safe and healthy and the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met today. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field, along with the first responders who every day are trying to save lives. And those also pick up garbage for us to keep our places clean and disease free as well as those that make deliveries of things that we take for granted for our convenience. Bevel blessings on the many women that are here trying to help rescue, deliver, and recover the teenagers and children that are the victims of child molestation and pedophilia, people that are the victims of prostitution, child prostitution, pornography, child pornography, human trafficking, and sex slavery. Double curses on the perpetrators of these heinous things. Double curses on those that profit from this filth and double curses on all the perverts that create the demand for these things, of which other perverts create the supply. Finally, blessings upon the homeless. There are nearly 600,000 men, women, and children homeless in the United States of America, mostly children, and millions around the world in similar or worse conditions. Blessings upon them, for theirs is the kingdom. Now, a couple things. Today, we want to discuss OG Ananobi. And he's a curious case, so we're going to talk about that. But overall, I want to just put this out so that those of us in Nick's Nation that really think, <laughs> and not instead of just going on straight emotion, can understand. Everything that my channel has put out since the season has ended is based on the number of options the Knicks have this year. For And I mean real options. Not dealing in fantasy. For example, there are people pining for SGA to come to New York. He's not available, and the Oklahoma City Thunder is not going to make him available. Therefore, you're dealing in fantasy. And if you want to do that, that's okay. That's, that's you. Sports, I guess, lends itself to fantasy. And, for example, in Anthony Edwards from Minnesota, they will trade their whole team before they let Anthony Edwards go. They will build around him as any competent franchise or franchise that wants to be competent would do. He's their top pick. He was the number one pick. He's budding. He's got all-star talent and superstar talent. So, yeah, so, you know, pining for these players is a waste of energy in my view. Now, there was a time when I would do that when there was no hope. Like, the Knicks had terrible management. They had terrible coaching. They had, a you know, a hodgepodge rosters and there would seem to be no direction. Then you would dream and fantasize about them getting some star player that would save the Knicks, right? But the Knicks are legit. Two playoff appearances in the top five in the last three seasons. Julius Randle, two-time All-NBA, two-time All-Star. Tom Thibodeau being coach of the year. Going into the second round, winning the first round series for the first time in more than 10 years this year. They're legit. And they're knocking on the door of championship contention with just a couple of pieces. Someone mentioned about, be, you know, I'm, I'm mentioning things that are make us marginally better. I don't know what you're expecting. They're not going to become a super team. The Knicks are not going to win 73 games. Marginally better gets us to the Eastern Conference Finals. Okay? So we need to tweak what we already have. They've drafted well. They've developed well. They're coaching well. Despite some of y'all, what y'all thinking, the results speak for themselves. So... They're actually on an upward trajectory in the right direction. Solid culture now with the front end office and the coaching staff. Solid culture on the team. And so, and that's why, again, some of you are talking about bringing in Miles Bridges. You do not bring in a guy with that type of baggage when you're just developing your culture. See, again, that's fantasy. So, you develop a nice culture. You're moving forward. You're just starting now. You're just coming out of baby steps in year three. So you want to continue. Someone talking about, well, look at Miami. Yes, Miami's developed that culture over 20 years. It didn't just start this season. Okay. What they have built has been building over 20 seasons, starting when Pat Riley first got there. And now with Eric Spolstra and Pat Riley in the front office, they got a solid culture. Everybody that comes to Miami knows what they're about and knows what's expected of them. And then everybody, every year Miami's in the conversation for a playoff. Uh, appearance, no matter how their roster looks. In this case, you got seven players that are undrafted in their rotation and they're in the Eastern Conference Finals. So that's a built culture over time. The only way for the Knicks to do that is over time. 
But if we left it to many and Nick's nation and Nick's media, we would never have time because they're always either talking about firing a coach, firing the front office, drafting or getting players that we don't need, that we don't want, things of that nature, because you're used to dysfunctional. We don't have dysfunctional in New York anymore. It's very functional. Okay. And the, and the Don's doing the job and that he's keeping the media out of his out of his office and doing what he does. So we are talking about, though, at this particular season, because of the combination of this being the last season of the old CBA and the Knicks success and development, you have a situation now that you may not get for the next four or five years. That is a situation where you can get talent to upgrade your roster that's already good. I'm not saying the Knicks have a bad roster. Like I said, we need a tweak. You got talent to upgrade your, you can get talent to upgrade your roster and get you to that next level and you can get it at a reasonable price. This is why I think that somebody in the rotation is being traded. I'm not talking about D Rose is expiring. So I don't know what y'all talking about trading him. He's not going to be tradable. He's going to be off the roster. 15.5 million gone. They're going to trade Fournier unless there's one way they will keep Fournier. And that is if they trade Emmanuel quickly. If the manual quickly, quietly demands a trade and he is involved in a trade, you might keep Fournier because now he becomes an expiring deal and he's still a shooter off the bench and he might move up into the rotation if you lose two pieces of your rotation. Because I'm not counting quickly as somebody that should be gone from the rotation. I'm hoping he stays, him and Obi. But I'm talking about between really what I'm talking about is between Julius Randle and RJ Barrett. I feel like one of those two is going to be traded. And for different reasons. But the overall commonality of the reasons is that if you trade them for the right pieces, you move your team up. And like I said, a tweak gets the Knicks to the next level. Now, y'all know how I feel. I'd rather, I don't want to trade RJ Barrett. I want Julius Randle to be traded. The mercurial nature, the the jumping in his teammates' face, and, and just all of the stupidness that have come from him. In spite of his performance, he has been negative in terms of the spirit of the team. And his IQ is one of, the, of anybody, if you took the 15 players that were all NBA this year, he's probably got the lowest IQ of all of them by far. His IQ in the basketball court is horrible. Okay, Now, he's a tremendous rebounder, tremendous physical specimen, you know, superstar. No, let me not say that. Star talent. Okay, star talent in the NBA, which is saying something, so he could play, but we could do better, okay, we could do better, and like I said, I'm pushing, and some of y'all getting mad at me, I don't care, I'm pushing for Obi Toppin, you know, if Obi gets traded, I'll be sad, but up until that day, I want Obi starting, I believe Obi's all-star talent, and I want Obi to play, okay, I'm a, more than play, I'd rather him to start if I can get him, but if I could get KP in here and, and let them split time, I'll do it, because we'll be better than with Julius Randle, in my view, but that's a different story. So we have this summer a real opportunity to upgrade the roster in a very positive and cost-effective manner. Okay, so next year, after next year, you're going to be hearing 40 and 50 million dollar a year players on the regular. That's how the CBA is going. You're going to hear 40 and 50 million dollar players on the regular, and people are going to have to make serious adjustments. And everybody knows it. So we want to make our moves now while you might get a guy for $30 million instead of $60 million. See, that's why y'all were right in saying, you know, no, no cap. I mean, aside from the possibility of him not fitting, and I think maybe he might, but even if he did, $60 million, $55 million, two, two years over $50 million, the last year $60 million? No. No. Eventually, you may have to do that. Like in four years, that may be the norm, but it's not right now. And while it's not, you can get cost-effective move that will get you into the next level, into the Eastern Conference final conversation, okay? And so everybody I've talked about, KP, um, Jeremy Grant, Pascal Siakam, everybody I've talked about so far, DeMar DeRozan, they're either available, straight available because they're going to be unrestricted free agents or their teams are going to make them available because of the position their teams are in, okay? They're not fantasy. They're actual, they're actually could become actualities, Okay, and that's why we're looking at them. This ain't fantasy basketball. The Knicks could actually make a move. Trade Julius Randle for one of these guys, and they can move to the next level. Okay, so that's what we're talking about. And that's why I say OG Ananobi is a curious case. He was on the trade market as, as late as this year. 
He's got one more year left on his deal and he can opt out. He's got 18 million left on his deal this year. And then he got a 19 plus something million dollar deal in 23 and 24, 25 that he's probably going to opt out of. He is 25. He's very young. He was all defense this year, all NBA defense this year. Okay. And he's 25. He's 6'7", 230 plus pounds, a big, strong dude. So he can play the three or the four. Okay. So he's a very curious case because if I'm Masai Ujiri, I don't want to trade him. I can build with him and Scotty. I might trade Siakam. If I'm trying to rebuild, I might let Fran Fleet go, Siakam go, uh, and, I'll, and I'll build around OG and, and Scotty Bones. But, and I don't know what the situation is, why he was discussed in trade talks, why he's talking about leaving. Maybe he doesn't like Toronto. I don't know, but he seems to be available. And they're in a situation where they're, they're looking to trade him. Now, what bothers me about this deal is if you want to be real about it, I obviously I just mentioned I'd run, I'd send um Julius Randle to Toronto and get back OG because OG could play the four, okay, and he and he's obviously all NBA defense. He's way better on defense than Julius Randle is, okay. But realistically, Toronto would want oh, RJ. They want RJ instead of OG. RJ is locked in. This is the first year of a four-year deal. And you, again, you're going into an era where you're going to see 40 and $50 million and $60 million contracts. And you're locked in with this kid to 25, 30 million for four years. He's 22. You can build around him and Scotty. He's from Canada. So if I'm Maasai, I'm asking for RJ. Okay. I, or our Hebrew, wouldn't do the deal. I wouldn't. I keep RJ and I just keep developing with RJ. But I'm just, again, I'm letting y'all know what's available, what's realistically can happen. Okay. KP can realistically happen. He's unrestricted free agent once he opts out on June 22nd, June, June 23rd, I think it is. Grant is unrestricted. He's a, he's, this, this is a possibility. Whether they sign with the Knicks or not, I'm just saying they're on the market. Okay. They'll be on the market. Um, Siakam has already been talking about being traded on the market. Okay. So, and so the, the Rosen on the market. Okay. So these guys are available. Yesterday we talked about Dorian Finney Smith and Cam Johnson, because depending on what the Nets do, they can be available. Cam Johnson's like going to be a restricted free agent this year. So he's available. They can match. But he's a restricted free agent. Um, he's got a, a $17 million cap hole. That's not going to be what he gets. I'd be surprised if he gets that. But he should be in that four-year $60 million range, uh, Cam Johnson. But he's restricted free agent. Okay. Um, Dorian Finney-Smith is in the last year of his contract, $14 million. Uh, so if they're going to make moves, this would be the time. Okay. Even if they want to keep and build around, which makes sense, McCall Bridges, and Nick Claxton, fine. But they could move these guys. So that's why I mentioned him yesterday. And that's a low cost. Very, in my view, those two guys, people were just tripping because they weren't all stars. Just too starstruck sometimes. Those two guys, with what we already have, you just take out Julius Randle, put those two guys in it. And you're going to the Eastern Conference Finals. And somebody had the nerve to say, Cam Johnson uh, doesn't prove in himself. I'm like, go back and look, please. Cam Johnson's a big game player. I don't know what some of y'all... Some of y'all just read something somewhere and just regurgitate it without thinking about what you're trying to type. Cam Johnson and Dorian Finney-Smith are big game players. Dorian Finney-Smith in Dallas and Cam Johnson in Phoenix. Big game players. In fact, Cam Johnson once beat the Knicks with 38 points. And Julius Randle was trying to fight him. Got all... Cam Johnson got in his head. Okay? So... That, that's why I mentioned them. And that's why, that's what we're talking about. Po true, real possibilities. Okay. Somebody mentioned Austin Reeves. Austin Reeves just got his biggest break with the Los Angeles Lakers. Do you really think <laughs> they're going to let him go? 6'8 can shoot the rock and play defense? So, again, 
real, not fantasy. Okay. OG Ananobi is a curious case because I feel like it's real, but I can't believe it. Like, he's 25. He's going to be 26 in July. Okay, so he's reaching his prime. He's not an 82-game-a-year player. He played 67 games this past season. And that's pretty much, like, for him, that's pretty much like a norm. You know, like, his first year, he played 74, and he played 67, 69, um, 43, 48, 67. Like the, the 2019 year, he played 67 games. He wasn't really a big factor in the championship run. Siakam was, but he wasn't along with Kawhi, of course. But he, you know, so he's not a, you can even say he might be injury prone, but he's 25 and he's going to be 26. And his last three seasons, he's averaged 16, 17, and 17. Okay. And then again, he was all NBA defense this year. So he could be just coming into his prime right now, you know. It could be something. He could be a lemon or not. I don't know. I, I think he's going to be good. But I don't think he's going to be... People won't be happy with his availability all the time. I think he's a good 65, 70 game player, which is fine. But, um, yeah, we'll see. But, again, to me, he's an upgrade. I would still keep RJ. But I ain't going to be fronting. OG Ananobi would be an upgrade because he would just his starting at that either the three or the four will upgrade the defense of the Knicks. If you especially at the four, if you put him in place of Randall at the four, the Knicks defense goes to another level. This is not a guy that needs to have the basketball all the time. He's very efficient. He shoots last year. He shot 39 percent from three. He's a career 38 percent from three shooter. And, and he takes like four five, six attempts a game so he's a he's a defensive dude defensive demon strong young man um you know team player high iq comes out of university of indiana um high iq player um yeah so he would be an upgrade for sure okay in fact everybody that i name i'd only name them if they're an upgrade okay and again yesterday that's an upgrade to me i know it, it doesn't sound sexy but dorian finney smith will lock somebody down, okay? Cam Johnson is decent on defense. He's not as bad as Fournier or Randall, and he shoots the ball consistently well. Th these guys would be upgrades for the next, but on the bench, Mob Deep go to another level. So that's what I'm saying. So everybody I've mentioned from KP to yesterday and everybody in between is upgrades. DeMar DeRozan, I'm not sure he's an upgrade. That's why I'm really not interested in him, but he's available. I'm not interested in him, but he's available. Uh, but OG and Obi's an upgrade, either at the three or the four. So they would want RJ. I would want to send them Julius. Um, I could see the Knicks wanting to keep Julius, although I don't understand it. But I'm going to tell you what, if they're keeping Julius this summer, um, I don't see how Obi stays another year playing 15 minutes a game. I don't know. I don't, I don't see him being happy with that. He's going to be 26 next spring. and He's, he's wasting time and money right now. So um, something's got to give. Something's got to give. So I don't know, but I'm telling you, one of RJ or Julius could be moved this summer because of what's out there, because the Knicks are now, they don't have to go chasing people. There are people that will want to play for the Knicks, okay, because of where we are. Coming out of the second round this year, two games away from getting to the Eastern Conference Finals, whole bunch of young players, nice roster that's developed nicely, solid culture. There are people that are going to want to come play for the Knicks. Now, um, OG and Anobi, like I said, you know, and we're dealing with Messiah Ujiri. But, you know, last year we were dealing with, again, we we're dealing with Danny Ainge, a ripoff artist, a ripoff artist. And you've seen what happened. The Don wasn't having it, and he stepped away from the table. He'll do the same thing with Messiah. He's not going to get ripped off. Okay? He's not, he's not having it. <laughs> he's not going out like that. So we don't have to worry about the Don getting ripped off. So Messiah could ask for the world if he wants it. And the Don will just say, no, thanks, but no thanks. I'll go someplace else. And he will, just like he did. So uh, <laughs> so we'll see what happens. But OG would be solid at either position, small or power forward. Um, you know, like I said, I'd rather him, I'd rather get him for Julius Randle. But Masai Ojiri is going to want R.J. Barrett, as he should. And, yeah. You know, so we'll see what happens. I'd rather keep RJ than get OG, but I can't front. OG 
is more polished. And he's not even, I mean, like I said, this year will be officially, he'll be 26. He's just entering his prime. And so he's going to be really good, but he's more polished than RJ is. He's more polished in every area of the game than RJ is. Okay. Better defensively, um, better spot up shooter, a better, you know, better, you know, rebounder. He's a, just a better ball player. Better, you know, and RJ is a good ball player. RJ is Broadway Barrett, man. That's what I'm saying. But so I, I can't argue if the Knicks made a move like that. But, and, and it fits. Because if you Masai, you got a 22-year-old, going to be 23, not even in his prime. You got him locked in. You got Scotty Barnes with him. That would be sweet. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. But like I said, we're only dealing in players that are available, that will upgrade the roster. It has to fit. It has to fit basketball-wise. It has to fit cost-wise. You know, all of that has to fit. And then it has to upgrade the team. OG and Anobi, either at the four or the three, would upgrade the New York Knicks. He just would, okay? Especially if you get OG. And let's say you did <clears throat> trade RJ. Again, I'm going to be stressed. I'm not with that. But let's say they did do it. And you have OG, Randall, um, Mitch Robb, Grimes, and, and Brunson. You just upgraded your defense. Even with Randall's some timeliness, you just upgraded your defense. And you still keep your bench. Yeah, they'll be good. <laughs> they'll be really good. Okay. And then to me, it's even better if you trade him for Randall because now you're upgrading your whole defense. Because I think RJ is a better defender than Julius Randall is. And at least he gives more effort. He just doesn't wave people by him, you know. So you get, again, upgrade the defense. Your spot of shooting is better. Your, your, your definitely your attitude is better. And, and if you're able to keep the rest of your squad, you're in good shape. See? So. Um, this is a move that's curious. It'll be interesting to see. Um, he's definitely not worth four number ones or whatever the freak, uh, Masai was trying to get from last year. And, and you know, Masai's stupid. I mean, he's going to come up with some stupidness. But like I said, the Don ain't having it. Um, I'm not, if I'm trading him for Randall, I might give them one pick because of his youth versus Randall. Randall will be 29. This kid is 25, right? So it's upside. But if I'm trading him for RJ, there's no picks involved. No, zero. Okay, it's either them two straight up or you can walk. Okay, that's what I'm saying. So some people is like saying, well, they're not gonna give us. I mean, somebody was talking about um, I forgot who. Uh, oh, they, we, they, oh, Embiid. You know, they're not gonna get Embiid for what you say. Okay, then there won't be a deal. That's what I'm saying. I got a price. I got my price. You don't like it? Okay, we can walk somewhere else. I don't have to have Embiid. Okay, there's too much out there right now. I could get, like I said, there's a whole bunch of other stuff out there I could look at. Okay. I don't have to have Joel Embiid. And I'm not trading half my team and all my draft picks to get him. No. Okay. So you have a price. With Embiid, I think I was willing to give three number one picks, Julius Randle, and some other stuff. But I'm not giving away OB and IQ and all of this. Any of you doing trades where you're trading both OB and IQ, y'all crazy. Y'all acting like desperate. Like you ain't got a date and you're desperate. <laughs> don't do that. You don't need to do that. Okay. So you have a price. And that's what I love about Leon Rose. He has a price. He has a value. He understands the market and knows what the, that the asset he's going for is worth. And he will not pay more than that. Okay. He makes a, a judgment decision of what that asset is worth. And he will not pay more than that. Okay. Last year, Utah wanted Grimes and RJ, and he made a decision. Grimes is not worth going to get Donovan Mitchell, and he was right. Okay, so if if you want to want us to you know come all out and empty our covers, not with Leon Rose, it's not going to happen. And so yeah, if it, if the deal calls for more than what I call for it for it to happen, I'm telling you, Leon ain't paying more than that, so it won't happen. <laughs> Simple as that. Okay, and I love that. Okay, I love it. We got a great. Nucleus right now. We just need to tweak it. And we have assets available that can do that. KP is better than Julius Randle, in my opinion. I'm sorry, he is. And he makes the Knicks a better team. Grant makes the Knicks a better team. Siakam makes the Knicks a better team. OG Ananobi makes the Knicks a better team. All four of those young men make the Knicks a better team. If I can get one of them and replace just one guy, just one block off, take Julius out, put one of them in, we're probably still playing right now. Okay. And remember, we got Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson's the real deal. 
He ain't no fly by night, just one year wonder. This kid is the real deal. So, yeah, Nick's in good shape. All right. So anyway, y'all enjoy your Wednesday. We'll talk soon. So.